What's up boys? Welcome to NBA Imperialism in 2K23. How this works is each NBA team starts off owning the state or province they are located in or share a portion of their state. From there, I will spin a wheel to decide which team will be attacking, then spin an arrow to decide which direction they will be heading. If the arrow points the attacking team into a state with no team, they will claim that state. But if they go into a state with an NBA team, they will have to beat that team on the road to claim their territory. And if they're attacking into the ocean, they'll just get a buy. This is not North Korea. We'll do this until there is one NBA team standing that controls the entire map. The kicker is they will also get to keep one NBA player of my choosing from each team they beat. For example, if the Utah Jazz were attacking West, they would automatically own Nevada. But if they were attacking East, they would face the Denver Nuggets. If they beat them in Denver, then not only would they own Colorado, but Nikola Jokic would be added to the Jazz roster. But if the Nuggets won at home, they would then own Utah and take Laurie Markkinen. I've seen this done on geography pages before, but I wouldn't have thought to do this in 2K without the YouTube channel Dean's World doing a Madden version of this. He only has 16,000 subs right now and consistently has super good content similar to what I make. So before you consider subscribing to me, please go check out this man's channel, show him some love and tell him this scumbag sent you. The first team on the attack is the Golden State Warriors. They will be heading northwest but slightly more north which means they will be playing the Sacramento Kings. By the way, the computers will be playing out all of these games on Hall of Fame mode with six minute quarters and the official 2K roster at the time of the recording. The Kings are actually good this year for the first time since the early 2000s. They came out hotter than Steel Beams in this one on a 7-0 run. The Warriors bench brought it back within two but Fox and Sabonis bonus had a great game while Curry not so much. They won by 25 at home which has the Kings in great shape to start off. Fox had 19 points, Sabonis had a double double and Curry had 2 points on 1 for 15 shooting. Even though the Kings already have a solid point guard and the Warriors have good forwards that could fill up some holes on the Kings roster, I'm not going to pass on 96 overall Curry. Fox will play the point guard and Curry will start as shooting guard. The Kings now own half of California, the Warriors are eliminated and we spin again. Next up is the Nets who will be heading south but slightly southeast. I realize later I forgot got to include Long Island, but the world might be better off without it anyway. And for now, the Nets gain the state of New Jersey. We spin again and land on the Bulls. They're attacking north and a little northeast. Lake Michigan is going to save the Detroit Pistons for now, so the Bulls will be attacking the Milwaukee Bucks. The Bulls managed to hold the lead in this one for a solid 12 seconds before being blown out 37 to 60. This Bucks team is overpowered in 2K already, but now they will add DeMar DeRozan at the shooting guard and own all of Illinois. The next spin landed on the Detroit Pistons, who are a geographical mess to begin with, so I'd love to see them get out of here. They'll be heading northeast, which will face them against the Toronto Raptors for all of Ontario. The Pistons' best player, Cade Cunningham, is out with injury in this one, so the Raptors are in really good shape. Somehow, the Pistons managed to keep this game close through the third quarter, but the Raptors pulled away late to win at home 38-47. to The Raptors' worst starting player is Gary Trent Jr. at the two, and the Pistons' roster really doesn't offer much help, but I ended up adding 83 overall Bogdan to their starting lineup. Michigan now belongs to Canada, and the Raptors have by far the most possible matchups, with seven teams on their border. The next spin brought us back to the west with the Portland Trailblazers who will be attacking straight east, which gives them Idaho. The wheel lands on the Bucks, who have already beaten one team. They'll be attacking southwest, which gives them my home state of Missouri. Next up on the wheel is the Wizards. I gave them Virginia and Maryland since they're located in DC. They're surrounded by tough matchups, but by far their best route is to beat the Hornets and keep heading south. The arrow points them northwest and that'll give them West Virginia. Honestly, I'm glad again that another disgusting border is out of here. The next spin lands on the Memphis Grizzlies. They'll be heading northeast. It was a bit more more north, which could land them Kentucky, but based on the last spin, I'm going to take this as a sign that they need to play the Washington Wizards. The Wizards took an early lead in the first half after dominating them in the paint, but the Grizzlies came back after some real nifty dunks by Ja Morant and Ja being willing to shoot it every time he touches a ball. The Grizzlies won 49 to 38 on the road. Kristaps went off on them with 20 and 10, but Ja Morant had the first 30 point game so far. The Grizzlies are a sound team to begin with, and their worst starter is 79 overall Dylan Brooks. This could definitely be seen as a questionable decision on my part but Bradley Beal and Kristaps are the same overall. But Ja and Beal don't seem like a good fit considering they're both ball dominant guards. So Kristaps will be the new starting center for the Grizzlies. He's also a decent three point shooter. So this could free up the paint for Ja in the future. The Grizzlies just took control over Virginia, West Virginia, and Maryland after this game, just adding on to the strong teams on the East Coast. Next up is the Utah Jazz who will be heading Northeast. Not to offend the seven people that live there, but taking Wyoming seems pretty pointless. The best part about this is that the Jazz logo is a perfect fit for these two states combined. The wheel lands on the Bucks again who already own three states. The arrow points them west and slightly northwest. So this will continue the Midwest takeover for the Bucks, giving them Iowa. Next up is the Trailblazers. They're heading directly southeast and thanks to Idaho, that'll give them an easy first matchup against the Utah Jazz. It wasn't a blowout, but the Jazz never had the lead. The Trailblazers won 46 to 37. The Trailblazers weak spot is a small forward position, which works out perfect for them because the Jazz's best player is 85 overall Laurie Markkinen. And sadly, 
he ends up being the second best player in the Trailblazers. The Trailblazers now have the second largest territory after taking Wyoming and Utah, and to be fair, owning Ontario is a cheat code. The next spin lands on the Brooklyn Nets will be heading east, but slightly southeast. If it would have been at all northeast, they would have battled the Boston Celtics to form a super team, but for now, all they get is Connecticut. The Rockets are up next, who are honestly just a charity team in this region, unless they somehow pull off an upset or play the Spurs, but they are heading directly northwest, which matches them up against the Dallas Mavericks. The Rockets held their own in Dallas, but the game was never in question. The Mavs won 46 to 39. Outside of Luka, this team is pretty mediocre in 2K, and in Mavs fashion, they'll be adding another mediocre piece in 84 overall Jalen Green. On the bright side, the Mavs now own more than half of Texas and don't have any super tough matchups surrounding them. Back to California, the wheel lands on the Clippers, but they are heading east, which will give them Nevada and add the improved Trailblazers to their borders. The next spin was so close to landing on the Kings, but it's a Hornets. They will be heading northwest, which matches them up against the Grizzlies, who have already added Kristaps Porzingis to their lineup. This game was supposed to be a blowout, but LaMelo Ball was not letting this happen. I still don't regret taking Kristaps over Beal. He was looking like a really good fit on this Memphis team, but the most unexpected problem came up. All game, no one could stop Mason Plumley. He gave the Hornets a lead midway through the fourth and had the Grizzlies fighting from behind. John Kristaps brought the game within one with 15 seconds left in the game. Down three, Desmond Bain took to tying three and missed. Jaron Jackson had an easy rebound, but it fell into Terry Rozier's hands, which secured the biggest upset so far. The Hornets were supposed to bend over and give up LaMelo Ball, but instead they beat the Grizzlies on the road, 55 to 50. Ja had 20, Kristaps had 13 and six, but Mason Plumlee was the player of the game with 16 and seven. The top three players on the Grizzlies are all guards. I could have added Kristaps, even though he's originally from the Wizards, but apparently Mason Plumlee has things covered over there. So I'm going to stick with handing off Ja Morant, making him the starting point guard and moving LaMelo to the small forward. The Hornets now own five states, including North Carolina, but this still looks like an easy team to beat for most teams in the region. Next up on the wheel is a neighbor of the Hornets, the 76ers. The Sixers are surrounded by states with teams, except there's a tiny chance they don't have to play because of Delaware. The arrow points them northeast, which will create a big time matchup between them and the Nets. This game was going down to the wire. There were several lead changes throughout the fourth, but with a minute and a half left, the refs stopped calling fouls for the 76ers. Still Embiid managed to put them up once again while double teamed in the paint. Kanye Irving puts them back up one with 37 seconds remaining. Everyone on the court is hot. Joel catches it wide open, but finds an even worse shot that goes in and out. The 76ers get it back down three. Joel drives to the paint. He's getting doubled once again. Tyrese Maxey couldn't be any more wide open for a three, but he's still forced into two. Ben Simmons has two chances at the line to put this game away, but he misses both. And for the tie at the buzzer. And there's only one option. They need a trip. The Nets hang on and win this one 51 to 48, which means Joel Embiid is now the new starting center for the Brooklyn Nets. The next wheel lands on the Clippers who are in danger with their borders. The arrow pointed them north, but just barely northeast, which means they will be attacking the Portland Trailblazers for a major portion of the map. I don't know what was wrong with Portland in the first half. They let the Clippers start off on a 16 to 3 run and went over seven minutes without scoring. They tried their best, but they couldn't recover from their slow start and lost at home 49 to 38. No surprise here with the Clippers new roster they'll now have Damian Lillard starting at point guard and taking over the biggest territory yet with the states of Oregon Idaho Utah and Wyoming all being added to the Clippers land the Clippers are on the attack again but they are heading northwest so for now they'll just add on Washington we get a first time attacker in the Oklahoma City Thunder they're also attacking northwest and because of their panhandle that will have them attacking the Denver Nuggets thanks to SGA this game was not the blowout I expected it to be the Thunder were within one point in the fourth quarter but Nikola Jokic one of the only white guys worth stealing in this video made some clutch plays down the stretch and defended their home court 49 to 57. Shea dropped 26 points on the Nuggets and at six foot six, I started him at shooting guard to give the Nuggets team a much needed boost. The Nuggets have the most awkward territory on the map now so to make things a little prettier I made their background maroon. The wheel landed on the Pelicans and pointed them southeast. I gave them Mississippi for this. Next up on the wheel is the Pacers who are attacking south which gives them Kentucky. The Pelicans are up again but this time heading west which lands them a huge matchup against the Mavericks who have already added Jalen Green. The Mavs were down two with 30 seconds left, but Jalen Green managed to pull off a better dunking crunch time of this game than he was able to do in the entire dunk contest last year. Time is running out with the game tied, so CJ McCollum decides to go right at Luka with a super unnecessary between the legs and hits a step back jumper in his face. The Mavs are out of timeouts. The AIs don't know how to roll a ball in, so Luka rushes down the court just to miss a game winner by a couple of feet. Luka is now the best player on the Pelicans roster, and they now own most of Texas, or pretty much all of it, considering the only thing stopping them is the Spurs hiding in a corner. Attacking next is the Boston Celtics. They're heading north, barely northwest, which I can't justify as a Knicks matchup. Their surrounding states are working against them. For now, they only add Vermont to their territory. This wheel loves the Bucks. They've already added three states and one player. The 
the arrow points them southwest and thanks to Missouri and Oklahoma this will start the first matchup of two teams that have already added players with DeMar DeRozan and SGA facing off at the two this game was looking like a good one Shea was cooking DeMar but he did it a little too well on a made bucket he hurt his ankle less than three minutes into the game and that ended up ruining the Nuggets chances of owning the Midwest the Bucks won 54 to 36 in just three minutes of play Shea was one of the leading scorers for the Nuggets the Bucks arguably could use a 91 overall point guard but it wouldn't hurt having the last two MVPs at the four and five Oklahoma's strange borders have had a big impact on this game and the Milwaukee Bucks are now by far the best team on the map the Pacers are up again after claiming Kentucky they're heading south to play the Charlotte Hornets the Hornets are one of the worst teams in the NBA this year but since the addition of John Morant they are much better than the Pacers by overall the Hornets were up five in the second half but the Pacers tied it up thanks to TJ McConnell's high motor sneaky athleticism ball game he was having from here the Pacers just had a better game and John Morant wanted to shoot it at every possible moment so the Pacers ended up getting a solid win on the road 52 to 43. John Morant is being passed off for the second time in a row he'll be starting point for the Pacers and Tyrese will be moved up to the two. The Pelicans are up once again and once again they are heading southeast which will land them Alabama. The wheel lands on the Timberwolves for the first time who need to do anything but attack the Bucks. Thankfully the arrow pointed them northwest which is more north and west and since the majority of their northern borders is next to Ontario I see this as a matchup with the Raptors. Raptors. Carl Anthony Towns is currently out due to injuries and the Raptors already added 83 overall Bogdan so it looks like a pretty easy game for the Raptors but it wasn't the Timberwolves somehow destroyed them 56 to 32 don't be mad at me all of Canada Rudy Gobert shut down the paint against them their leading scorer was Fred Van Vliet with 15 Rudy had a double double two steals and two blocks the Timberwolves are pretty set at the one and two and with cat outs Yakum will be joining Shaq 2.0 in the paint if I was more accurate with my drawing of Ontario it would be a little more believable but the Timberwolves now own the largest territory on the map by square miles the Kings are up again for the first time since the first spin and they are surrounded by the Clippers so it's no surprise they are playing them the Kings took their first lead in the second quarter after the Red Mamba hit some tough shots from here this game turned into a three-point shootout and thanks to the Kings acquiring Curry they were winning at this the Kings pulled off another tough one winning 55 to 37 on the road after Kevin Herter's clutch performance in the last one I moved him to the starting shooting guard so Fox could run the second unit and so Kawhi can start at the small forward the Clippers territory at its peak was only 12,000 square miles smaller than the Timberwolves so adding most of California to that gives the Kings the largest portion of the map and makes them the second team to add two players joining the Milwaukee Bucks half of the league is eliminated by now yet nine of the 15 teams remaining haven't played a game yet for the first time yet the Cavaliers are on the attack and they are surrounded by upgraded teams so there's no way out of a game in this one they're heading southeast which has them going into Pacers territory even with the Pacers adding John Morant these teams are very even by overall John Morant took the lead in the last minute of the game and Donovan Mitchell missed the tying shot so they were forced to foul but Donovan Mitchell finally got it through his head that Lamar Stevens is a man to hit the big time shots for this Cavs team they had to foul again to make it a three-point game with four seconds left and Darius Garland pulls off a lamello ball to tie it up at the buzzer to send this game into overtime and in overtime Darius Garland was having his way with John Morant and the rest of the Pacers he carried this Cavs team to the OT victory 56 to 49 now here comes another questionable decision by me because I've seen John Morant lose for the Grizzlies Hornets and Pacers now he's a 94 overall player that can get you 20 points but he needs 20 shots to do so so I'm taking 89 overall Tyrese Halliburton at small forward which looks like a much better fit for this system and a team that already has two six foot one guards starting for them I'll save the Ohio jokes for the comment section but in just one game the Cavs already have one of the best teams in largest territories on the map next up on the attack is the Boston Celtics who are heading southwest for their first game against a very tough Nets team that has already added Joel Embiid the Celtics held their own in this one they had it within four in the fourth quarter but this Nets team was on fire over the next three minutes and won 42 to 57 I had to make the tough decision to move Ben Simmons out of the starting lineup after this one to make room for Jason Tatum at the small forward another virgin team is up on the attack the Los Angeles Lakers who are playing without Anthony Davis will be heading southeast to play the Phoenix Suns who are missing Devin Booker I fully expected the Suns to blow out the Lakers with them having home court advantage and a much deeper roster but LeBron gave the Lakers a 10 point lead in the fourth the Suns big three of DeAndre Ayton Landry Shamit and Chris Paul did manage to make it a two-point game in the last minute and if only Chris Paul could have finished the and one here the outcome of this entire video could be completely different on the next play LeBron just big bodies his way in and sucked off the refs in the pregame so he gets two free throws here with one and a half seconds left out of the timeout Chris Paul went for a quick game winner but it's no good and the Lakers pull off the upset 52 to 50. I'm a bronze sexual myself but do you think 2k loves him enough he can't even give an interview without security watching over his every move I definitely would have added Devin Booker to the 
the Lakers team if he didn't strain his groin from hanging out with the Kardashians. Instead, I added Chris Paul to the Lakers starting five, which still has his team looking mediocre. Once again, we have a first time team in the Orlando Magic. They're attacking Southeast, which clearly has them heading into the Miami Heat. The Magic were playing from behind all game, but with 30 seconds left, they find the demigod Bull Bull for an open three. And down four, they give it back to Bull Bull again, but this game must be rigged. He misses the shot while being triple teamed and the Magic lose 45 to 50. I added Paolo Boncaro to the Heat starting five, who was the highest overall in the Magic and now the tallest starter for the Heat. The Cavaliers are up again, but they are heading southeast, which for now will just add to their Confederate State collection with South Carolina. The Knicks almost have their first game, but it's once again the Kings. The arrow points them east and slightly southeast, which I see as a Kings versus Bucks super team matchup. This game was dominated by a lack of melanin. Sabonis pushed the Kings lead to four after dunking on the MVP duo. DeRozan was dominating the mid-range game, but Curry reminded him that threes are worth more than twos, so the Bucks gave it to their white guy for a big time three late in the fourth. DeRozan and Jokic proved to be a beautiful combination on the pick and roll. I really think they're NBA soulmates that haven't found each other in real life. This game is tied in the last minute, but Curry hits a step back three with Giannis contesting and he's already emoting with the ball still in the air. The Bucks respond with a quick two and stop, but DeRozan draws contact and doesn't get the foul or finish, so they're forced to send the Kings to the line. The Bucks are out of timeouts and don't have any great three-point shooters besides Jokic, so the big men take the ball in, kick it up to Middleton, and with Giannis trailing... That'll force them into a three-point attempt. The shot. Oh, oh, boy, he he it. That was the biggest shot yet to force overtime at the buzzer, but none of that would have been possible if it weren't for my guy Keegan Murray acting like a fan sitting courtside on defense. I don't know how many edibles he took before the game, but he gave Giannis a good 10 to 15 feet on the game tying shot. These guys were still going back and forth in overtime, but Curry is an absolute cheat code when he's hitting his shots. The Kings pull off the biggest victory yet, 66 to 61 on the road. The Bucks big three combined for 42 points in this one, but Curry had 31 points by himself after only shooting threes for the entire game. The Kings will be adding 97 overall Giannis to the power forward spot because I already have Jokic's father at the center. The Kings territory now stretches far and wide from the Pacific Ocean to Lake Michigan. And to them, teams like the Lakers and Timberwolves are looking like countries with untouched oil that could use a new form of government. We're down to 10 teams now and the wheel lands on the Pelicans again. The arrow points them northeast to face off against another upgraded team, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Only five minutes into the game and Evan Mobley was taken out with an arm injury while being blocked. This this led to the Pelicans going up seven after dominating the paint, but Darius Garland is the best point guard in all of basketball. He hit four three-pointers in the fourth quarter to take back the lead for the first time since the first, and from there, it was all Cavs. They won 52-42. to Darius Garland did not miss a shot all game and had 14 points in the fourth quarter alone. And on the other side of things, Luka made the Pelicans worse after shooting three for 17 for nine points, which led me to another tough and bad decision. Luka is clearly the best player on the Pelicans team, but these Cavs are already have three great point guards and I don't want to mess with their system that has thrived off of good shot selection. So I'm taking Zion at the small forward who could also play the four and they'll be mimicking the Kings success by having Tyrese Halliburton lead the second unit off the bench. The Cavs now have one of the largest territories on the map and as long as they don't run into the Kings or Nets first they have some easy teams down south to pick off and build up the roster with. And wouldn't you know it the Kings are up once again except they're heading northwest. They already own all of the northwest and the continental United States and since they're a pretty dominant dominant superpower at this point, I'm just going to have them nuke Alaska and Hawaii off the face of the earth and move on. The Heat are up next who are heading pretty straight west and thanks to the Florida Panhandle, that'll have them facing these super team Cavs. The Heat got off to a hot start on the road, but the Cavs death paid off and they took the lead back. Respectfully, the Heat stayed in it for most of the game. For just adding Paolo, they put up a great fight, but their positioning on the map and luck was their downfall. The Cavs took Jimmy Butler from the Heat, who will start at the small forward. Zion will go back to his natural position at the power forward and Evan Mobley will join Tyrese off the bench. The Cavs are up again. They have been dominating this wheel ever since their first game against the Pacers. They're heading southwest. It was more south, but I'm going to take this as a game against the Spurs. They've been shaken in the corner for far too long to have a shot at winning this anyway. And the Cavs, as expected, beat them 55 to 28. The Spurs really don't have much to offer here, but I decided to take Devin Vassell for some extra shooting ability coming off the bench. The Cavs now own all of Texas and they are surrounding the Hawks, so they're in danger. The Lakers are up again and they're really not in a good position either, being between 
between the Kings and the Cavs, but they ended up heading southeast. So for now, they're safe and they'll just add New Mexico to their territory. And the poor Hawks are due for a spanking. I guess they'd get a buy if they were heading into the ocean, but they are going northeast into a whole lot of Cleveland Cavaliers territory. There were no miracles in this one. They lost 36 to 60. And Trey Young will be adding on to the all star team bench they have in Cleveland. By the way, I know Darius Garland is not the best point guard on this team by overall, but every time I had the computer rebuild the rotations, they'd keep him in the starting five. So I just rolled with it. Anyway, the inevitable has happened. The Hawks are off the face of the earth and the Cavs territory is really starting to look like the old Confederacy map. We're down to six teams and the Kings are up again. They're heading Southwest, which lands them an easy game against the Lakers who have only added Chris Paul. And while I'm here, I decided to give the Kings Nebraska and Kansas since they've already surrounded them and it would just mess with the arrow spinner. The Lakers were actually killing the Super Team Kings at home for the majority of this game. The Kings were making a comeback late in the game, but in the middle of it, LeBron desecrated Curry's lineage. He threw a flying knee into his chin and Curry's going to have to finish this game with a broken jaw. The Kings were down 10 with two and a half minutes left in the game, but Giannis finally woke up and more importantly, the Red Mamba did too. Giannis babied LeBron and made it a five point game. Then he babied CP3, kicked it up to Kevin Herter, who doesn't miss and all of a sudden it's a three point game. Giannis then found some bonus for another bucket and Curry hits a jumper in traffic just to emote again while it's in the air and the Kings get their first lead of the game with a minute left. LeBron went at Giannis in the paint. He's tired. He's cold. He's daddy. It doesn't matter. He still finishes. Down one with 30 seconds left. Curry enters the paint, but it's clogged up. He still finds a bonus for the and one. I'm not sure where the foul was, but that put them up two. LeBron forced up a couple bad shots for old time's sakes and the Kings pull off an amazing comeback 52 to 46. Afterwards, I took LeBron from the Lakers and for now he will be the starting shooting guard on the Kings. We are down to the top five teams. The Knicks have made it this far without playing a single game or taking a single state. With half of New York, they are by far the smallest in square miles and population. The Nets are the second smallest in square miles, but third in population after starting off with half of New York, then taking Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, New Jersey, Connecticut, and Vermont. The Timberwolves have also had a pretty easy route after only beating the Raptors who already had beaten the Pistons for them. Still having Ontario by itself would have them third in square miles on the map. The Confederate Cavaliers are second in square miles and first in population. They didn't get busy until after the halfway mark, but they've been rolling over teams since their first game. The Kings, on the other hand, were in the first game against the Warriors and are still standing. They have the largest territory on the map and the second largest population. And for some reason, no one seems to want Arkansas, not even the Confederacy. Finally, the Knicks are done playing Switzerland. They finally have to do something and they're playing the Nets, which could have happened at the very beginning of this video, but they had to wait until now to do it. It was too little too late for the Knicks. They never had the lead and they lost by eight. The Nets will add their third player with Jalen Brunson starting at the shooting guard. The Cavaliers are up and they get nothing after heading southeast. They're up again and they get nothing by heading southwest, but I'm just going to try to include Arkansas in this by adding them to the Cavs. The Nets are up and they're heading southeast, which still doesn't give us a game, but shout out to Delaware. The wheel really is loving the Cavaliers right now and they're heading northwest, which starts a huge matchup between the Cavs and the Kings. These teams were at a stalemate for the first half. The biggest lead was the Cavs going up by six. And the third, Curry found LeBron for a 360 lob in traffic to bring the game within three. I thought the Kings were rolling now. They had momentum, but LeBron had an open lane and he throws it off the wrong side of the backboard. The Kings were still looking solid in the third. Curry and Giannis even gave them their first lead of the half. In the fourth, LeBron started to bully people. Curry couldn't miss and it didn't hurt that Giannis's alien ass was running around the whole time doing things. The Cavs had a terrific late run in this one. Thank God I don't have to sell out for some corny Ohio jokes to end this video. And the Kings are going to add some size off the bench with 92 Zion being the sixth man. Down to the final three and the Nets are heading northwest into Timberwolves territory. I even tried to give the Timberwolves another advantage with their gay pride jerseys and they still got blown out at home, 48 to 27. The Nets have only beaten a few teams so they really need some help to defeat the Kings in their next game. So I can't pass up on the three-time defensive player of the year winner, the stifled tower, Rudy Gobert. Obviously, I'm kidding. I'm giving them Siakam. We still have to spin to determine home court advantage for the final game and the Kings are on the attack but heading west. You know what? Wisconsin can head west into the Nets territory. Screw them for taking out the Bucks. The Kings will be playing the final game on the road. I knew this would be a close one so I changed the starting five for both teams so that the best five available are starting and so that the matchups make sense. We've got Curry going against Kyrie, Kawhi versus Tatum, LeBron versus KD, Zion versus Siakam, and Giannis versus Joel. The Nets still have two original players starting for them but the Kings have all the original players acting more as cheerleaders. This game started off going back and forth but Kawhi wasn't participating in it. Honestly, he hasn't had a decent game ever since he left the Clippers. Curry 
Kyrie tied the game up before the end of the first with a step back three and afterwards Giannis started to turn into a cheat code deservingly so the Nets responded by sending in the big bad Ben Simmons to try to take out some of their key players but there were no injuries in this one the Nets took the lead back in the third off a KD triple Joel actually played like a seven foot 300 pound center for a solid five seconds which helps Joel has an open lane on Curry nope step back jumper yeah Kyrie drives to the paint and let's freeze it here there are three of the best NBA players in the league open on the three-point line while down two. There's four defenders trying to stop him in the paint, but what's he gonna do? I swear ever since Kyrie didn't get the jab and took some jabs at the Jews, they secretly made his 2K player dumb as hell. Eventually, his zero IQ does get him fouled and brings the game within one. And the Nets keep getting stops and opportunities to go up, but Kyrie is refusing to share. And KD gets a clutch steal just to miss a layup. The Kings go up three and even a priest gets laid once in a while. Kyrie gets his first field goal of the game with 15 seconds left. LeBron hits both free throws. The Nets are down three. KD misses. Joel gets a board. Siakam gets a wide open three, but it's no good. The Kings win it all after beating the Nets on the road 48 to 43. This wouldn't have been possible without Kevin Herter and Kyrie Irving, so they both get a co-MVP for this one. Three big men were the leading scorers for the Nets. Kyrie went one for 12. KD went one for 13. The Kings were not invincible, but they were undefeated defeated the Lakers, Bucks, Cavs, and Nets almost had them. But that's going to do it. Again, go check out Dean's World on YouTube. Seriously, I don't care if you watch any more of my videos today. I'm sure you've watched enough ads by now. I'll even put his Madden version of this in the post credits if you're interested. Thank you guys for watching. Much love and light the beam.